Okay, I cut the frames. Hopefully that'll hopefully that'll work. If it doesn't, I'm gonna be crying and sad. And you'll be able to watch. So that's good. Oh well anyway, see that's that's just it. So I spent how long working on this yesterday? Two hours or already So it's just frustrating. But everything looks better now. Um, I keep checking on it because it's like, it makes me nervous. What are we, 13 minutes in? So we didn't get good 13 minutes, but we're going to stay with this. If I lag the frames, I'm sorry. Um, if it's terrible, I'm sorry. Don't watch the stream today. Hell, get on there and chat and tell me how it's going. That'd be good. I mean, that, that doesn't ever happen. So, um, let's talk about some house cleaning stuff. So, Saturday, uh, there's, I'm not going to be able to stream in the morning. I, sh I should be able to stream in the afternoon, um, but it just doesn't look real good for Saturday, uh, this coming Saturday. Um, had some things come up and just, just not going to be around to stream. So, that's that. Um, wanted to get into, uh, you know... I worked on those camera settings for hours yesterday and I thought I really had something. And so when I came uh, to bring it to you and it's messed up, let me go. Uh, there's, I have another, um, I have another thing I need to check, but let's, let's do that now. Okay, hopefully everything now is good. Man, that that shakes you whenever you try something. I'm just disappointed now. I was trying to run something that was pretty slick. Um I don't have this I don't have the I have the internet to do it. I have the camera to do it. I don't have the computer to do it. I'm a little bit short on the uh on the frames. Which is disappointing. But Hopefully, how do I say it? Hopefully, uh, I got everything in con under control. I think I will change one thing. It depends on how the recording looks. But um, hopefully, uh, now I get to cough. <coughs> hopefully, what are my goals here? Hopefully, it's 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 better. The picture is better than it has been. Hopefully, you're you're, you're like wow, that's visually stunning. Hopefully, we're not gonna we're not gonna drop frames anymore and all that stuff. Hopefully, uh, you're gonna be happy with uh, the way things look. Um, on the smoke, like whenever I see my streams, like the recorded ones, it, to me it always looks smoky. It always looks like there's a film of smoke over everything, and I don't like it. And I, I want it clear, like when I see in the uh, in the video. The live video it's very very clear it's very very nice and i'm very happy with it but then when i see the recording it's like that's terrible now if you notice a couple of things one i have like an autofocus and i keep it on um i don't know why i just i guess mostly because i'm worried that something's going to happen and it'll get out of focus and i won't be able to fix it during the live stream i basically worry about disasters so i was worried that uh, you know like if you look in the background like by the office which is gonna be over here, which is gonna be over, it's always backwards, right there. Uh, hello hand, right there. See the office and then the guy above it? They may go in and out of focus a little bit, but I think I'll be in pretty good shape. Um, that scares me. And then I had my, I did all this camera stuff and you know, you're supposed to do uh, manual. You know, like you like you pay for a you pay for a, a, a camera to be just fantastic, and then you end up with uh, 
you know, like, why, like, why doesn't it just do the best settings all the time? I mean, we've gotten to the point you'd think that it would be able to figure that out. And that's what I'm paying for. So, um, you know, I, I left it on, on uh, automatic for everything else. And, uh, hopefully the picture is good. Hopefully the picture is good. But I, I promise you, like I was recording and recording and recording. I, I did like 30 tests on my recording yesterday. Uh, to get to the sharpest I possibly could and then to I never even thought to even start the live stream because I didn't think that uh, How do I say it? I didn't think that uh, that was going to be the issue I thought that the recording feature was going to be the hardest one Now one of the weird things that's happening and I don't want to I don't want to criticize it Okay Is the last two days that I've you know I had to do a whole new setup when I moved over to the old the new channel and so one of the things that uh, had been happening is every time I ended a recording, it would just, it would make this terrible noise and I wouldn't get what I needed to get. Hopefully that's gone away. Um, and look, whenever we get it right, it's going to be great, right? I mean, we spent time on it. It's going to be great, but we had a little growing pains this morning. If I would have had a hundred viewers on uh, this morning at the same time, I'd have been absolutely scared to death, sad, but it's just us. I mean, we're moving over to the new channel, and as you know, people watch my stuff later, which has always been strange to me, but it happens every day. Um, gosh. We talked about the weather. I'm stuck at home today. How will it impact showings this weekend? Well, I'm not going to be able to show houses on Saturday. There won't be no, I will be showing no houses on Saturday. I have buyers that need to see houses, and so uh, my assistant, my assistant, my colleague Jan, will uh, show houses for me and I would do the same for her if I was in a situation um, like I'm in which is it is what it is so that's how we're gonna do it Sunday I'll be back to the grind but Saturday is gonna be Saturday's gonna be a tough day go to my 44 I say that all the time but that's gonna be a tough day for me just to get through it I uh, I'm just going to tell you the stuff that's that's irritating to me because I've got time when you do too, since you're here. Um, I've been putting together my, uh, my, my clips channel, uh, trying to get caught up. Um, but then when I got like yesterday, I managed to get through two, uh, two live streams with clips and, um, between that social media and everything else, I didn't get, a podcast episode out and now the only reason why i split the podcast with the uh, live stream is so that i could do better in the algorithm in, in theory and now i've i'm i missed the opportunity to do a video yesterday um all the things i do are equally important because none of them are proving to be very good at, at producing any sort of revenue so they're all on equal footing it just becomes it, it becomes a question of how much time you're going to spend on everything and I need to uh, figure out how to how to get some of this done. It's not it's not pleasing to uh, be working like last night. I worked until nine thirty. And I took a shower and then I was out. And I'm I'm back streaming, and um, I don't I need I need uh, space to do the real estate business from time to time. I don't want to fill up my whole day with uh, with busy work if that makes any sense. You know, one of the one of the scary things or one of the tough things about being a real estate agent, being a real estate broker is is this idea like you have this free time. Well, you don't really have any free time. You always have to be working. And then um then it's then it becomes a question of well, what are we going to do that's going to be the best for the you know, what's the best use of our time? And it's like if you if you start new initiatives like YouTube for us, we started in July. Um, it's now February. Uh, how how do we know? And I mean, I just moved it to a new channel all to its own. So how do I know that it's you know? I'm, I suspect I'm going to need what what a year at least to to figure out you know how things are going. I might go even longer. I I I'm pretty pig headed. I'm pretty stubborn. On the on the. Uh, on the podcast, I don't know if I'd ever get rid of the podcast. I, I really like it. The problem that I've had right now, and I'll be honest with you, is that 
like maybe I'm de- I'm uh, um. I'm kind of developing my skills over time. Like I've been doing a lot more writing out of the podcast, like every single part of it. Um, so it's almost like a video. It's kind of in a weird spot. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to rely too much on articles because sometimes I think that they're. I don't know. I, I don't want to use the article as a crutch, uh, and I want to bring my own thoughts to the articles, but. Sometimes sometimes it's easier for me if I write down those thoughts because if I don't, I just lose them. You know, I just, when I'm on camera, am I nervous to be on camera? No. But there's, there's definitely, for me, a difference between, like, thinking about something and then, then it coming out, like, in, in words. Um, I typically keep... Well, and that's that's the other thing. So, in one of the one of the spots where we haven't been able to really explore is, I haven't um, I haven't been able to interview anybody. And so, uh, when I'm in a conversation, obviously I can keep going. I mean, I don't even I focus way more on the uh, person. But in this case, it's like I'm fo- I'm focusing on the camera, which is not any. It's like it's one person and it's infinity per- people. So, and it doesn't talk back. And without the chat to, uh, to go, it's like, I just I have to keep talking. I mean, I don't mind putting spaces and stuff, but, you know, no one's going to watch a, a live stream where there's no, well, I mean, people will watch anything, but apparently just not my, not my stuff. Now, what will I do in YouTube? God only knows what there's, there's going to be four videos for today with the same title. Probably gonna have to delete some of those after I review what happened. I've gotten no drop frames or anything now, and hopefully I've got a smooth recording. That's the most important thing to me is the recording. All right. Well, since this has been a debacle so far, it's almost been twenty-five minutes. Let's go into some articles. I'm gonna do something I haven't done before, and that's I, saw, I happened to see an article before I before I came online. Has nothing to do with Google search, but it had to do with bathrooms. And gosh, I mean, how can we not do a story with bathrooms? And so, let's uh, let's switch it up there. Here we go. Forty-five thousand restrooms in the U.S. where you can go when nature calls. It says cities are notoriously terrible for providing public restrooms. I'm gonna pause this because God only knows where I'll get my next copyright uh, warning. Uh, 45,000 uh, restrooms, it says. Uh, cities are notoriously terrible for providing public restrooms, so a new app partnered with businesses like Home Depot and Texas Roadhouse to highlight available bathrooms. Kind of an interesting, kind of an interesting thought here. Um, I, don't know, I don't know that the city must require public restrooms. I don't know that that's, I don't know that that's a part of the governance, good governance. I don't know. And I don't know that, you know, if the local pizza place will only let you use the restaurant if you buy a pizza. And I, and I remember Starbucks got involved in the restroom business there for a while, and that didn't go very well. So uh, let's, just, let's just check this out and see what it has to say. It says, um, public restrooms are vital infrastructure, yet for decades cities across America left it to private businesses like Starbucks and McDonald's to pick up the slack. I thought that's interesting. It says a vital public infrastructure. I don't think of it that way. A new app wants to increase the number of public restrooms across the U.S. by leveraging the massive footprint of those businesses. It says, we can't wait. Last week launched with more than 45,000 restroom locations listed around the country. It's the leading initiative of the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation's open restrooms movement, which seeks to raise public awareness of the lack of access to public restrooms. Approximately 1.6 million Americans currently suffer from IBD. The app was built with them in mind, but it could also prove useful for people experiencing homelessness who often up and who often end up being further marginalized and humiliated for being forced to urinate in public. It's a very interesting way to look at things. I mean, there's 300, what, 50 million people in the United States, and that 1.6 of them have IBD. That's not good. But then you have this uh, being, f- you're homeless, but you're going to be further marginalized because you have to pee on the street. But I don't, think it, I don't think it works that way. 
We Can't Wait joins a host of other apps with a similar mission, including Flush, Sit, and Toilet Finder, but it operates on a slightly different model. On top of crowdsourced locations, which can be unreliable, the app has partnered with retail and restaurant establishments like Home Depot, Texas, Roadhouse, and Just Salad. Now, I didn't even know there was such a place. Uh, putting more than 3,000 verified restaurant locations on the map. Checking my live stream to make sure we're not having a disaster like we started with this morning. Oh, now I went to the wrong one. It says, public restrooms have long been neglected, but the pandemic has reaffirmed their importance. In fact, it was in 2020 that Michael Oso, the president and CEO of the Crohn's and Colias Foundation, realized the magnitude of the problem as public buildings closed and restaurants and coffee shops shifted to take out only thousands of restrooms became off limits. Not only those for those who could buy their way into a bathroom with a $4 cortado, but for also for people experiencing homelessness. It became obvious there was a dearth of public restrooms in the U.S. It's a challenge broadly that was ex- exacerbated by COVID-19. Now, this is very interesting. I don't see this. I just don't, I don't see it like this. Now, I've always heard that New York has a terrible bathroom problem. In my own life, I'll share that I, I, for at least two years, maybe more, I couldn't go. I couldn't, I couldn't travel because I wasn't going to go well. I need to close this window here. Here. I'm a little worried about my live stream. Because the stuff I was doing wasn't that bad. And and YouTube was following up this morning. So anyway, let me get back to the the thing. So anyway, I couldn't go for two years, two or three years. So this is not a good situation. It says the app reveals a major urban planning flaw in this country. While city planners often promote public spaces, reliable transit, and parks, they rarely address public restrooms. New York City, for example, has only 1,103 public restrooms for more than 8 million residents and 63 million tourists each year. Most of them are located in parks or inside subway stations with little to no regard for safety and comfort, let alone design. By comparison, the Tokyo Toilet Project has been commissioning a who's who of famous architects to design dazzling new public restrooms throughout the city center. I don't know about this. I, I don't I don't know. This is like this is this is territory that I'm not familiar with. I'm I'm being honest. So it says for Oso, one way to bring more public restrooms to the public was to ask businesses to open up their own bathrooms. So far, three companies have signed on with 2,000 locations across the country. Home Depot is set to make the most impact, followed by Texas Roadhouse with almost 600 locations in 49 states and. Just Salad with 36 locations, mostly in New York City. The map also includes crowdsourced locations as well as places that are commonly known to have restroom access like McDonald's and Starbucks, which together account for more than 20,000 locations across the U.S. On the map, partners' business locations are marked with orange stores while crowdsourced ones appear in yellow. It says, Oso says that most states have well over 500 locations on the app's map, But some states are laughing. For example, Alaska, Vermont, and Wyoming have only 100 restrooms each. You know, like Wyoming isn't that hugely populated, I don't think. And I don't think Alaska is either. It says, naturally, the app's success will depend on how many people continue to participate and how many companies join the cause. To reach critical mass, OSA wants to continue partnering with businesses that have a large footprint. I don't know. I don't know. How do you make money at this? If you're the toilet company, do you, are you not trying to make money because you're a uh, part of a foundation? For those companies, opening up restaurants would be good for business too. It may not be the point of the partnership, but also sees the potential. You have an orange star and people are increasingly coming to your business. I suspect you have an increased opportunity to make a sale. On the other end of the spectrum, however, is perhaps where the app could go do the most good. For the 552,830 unhoused people in the country, 45,000 more restrooms could provide a safe and dignified space until cities themselves step up to create more. So there's only half a million homeless in the United States? 
Really? Boy, it seems like there's a lot more. I don't know. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was interesting. You know, you go on a you go on a vacation and it's like like where's the bathroom? Kids have to use the bathroom. You have to use the bathroom. What is this? Oh. Yeah. Boy, I got a mess in my email now cuz every time I do a every time I do a live stream, every time I start one, it uh it sends me an email, so there's like four emails. I'm really sorry about this morning. That was that's not a good way. I feel like we've rebounded, though. But if I would just keep my mouth shut, that'd be better. This is the article that I saw on Google. There are 50,000 searches on it. I thought it was interesting. Why? I'm not sure. It says, Raising Kansas preparing to open its largest Texas restaurant in Odessa. It says, I don't even know if this is playing, but we don't need this. It says, Raising Kansas is preparing to open its largest Texas restaurant in Odessa on March 29th. Midland's own Raising Cane's opened in February of 2020. The new restaurant is hiring more than 200 local crew members to help prepare quality chicken finger meals in the double kitchen and share it via a double drive-thru. Crew members for multiple positions ranging from crew to shift managers and beyond will be available. Odessa's first Raising Cane's opening will mark the second in the Permian Basin and 183rd location in Texas. 183 locations in Texas alone. My gosh. It says, we opened a Cranes in Midland two years ago and it's been a huge success creating tons of Caniacs in the area. It said area leader at Rough Restaurants, Doug Haley. So we couldn't be more excited to give Caniacs in Odessa a Raising Canes to call their own. What would a Deerwood Realty fan be? Deerwood Realty Act? A Deerwood Act? Work on that and put it in the comments and let's figure out what a fan of Deerwood Realty would be called. Uh, we're also thrilled to continue to bring hundreds of great jobs to the area. More local crew members means more hands on deck that are eager, eager to proudly serve our community. You know, like I'm not, I'm just putting it out of there. Of all the fast food workers in a, in a low, like the way this is written, I'm just, do you really think that, now there, do you really think that that fast food worker is eager to proudly serve the community? They're probably more likely to just, they're eager to make enough money to find um, different employment, probably. Um, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not being critical, but I just. I'm kind of done with this whole like community thing. Like, in this sense, okay. Say, say I'm driving in my car. And you would say you're driving in your car. And then I'm, I'm, I'm not from Texas, but I'm driving there and I'm going to the Raising Canes in Odessa in March. Do I, do I care about the community? Not really. I'm driving through. I'm just passing through. Um, all I want in this case is like chicken fingers. And I, I just prefer that not be screwed up. That's what I would like. I don't really care about the community. I don't really, I don't really care if the community likes me. I, I just, I just want to get my chicken fingers and get back on the road. Uh, we've, we've, it seems, it seems like we've shifted the focus from uh, community, like from like customers, which are important to community, which may or may not be important. And let me, let me give you an example. I have a friend that has a small business in a certain city, and I will not say anything about it because I don't want you to think they're bad people. This is just the way I view things. They started the business just like I do. Like, 
started the business. Uh, you know, not a lot of cash coming in, not making a big profit, but they're just trying to make it, right? Well, their particular business is one in which, um, I don't even know how to say it. They have people that uh, constantly come in and they're like, can you do this for free for us? Like, you need to donate this for this. And then it's like, well, if we donate it, we, don't, we can't stay in business. We don't. We need, we need to sell products, not just give them away. And, and we're talking specialized, highly specialized products that, you know, are customized to each person. And it's like, look, this isn't going to work. And it's like, well, if you don't do this, you're not a member of the community. This is, the, this is one of the women that came in. It's like, well, we can't, we're not even going to be a part of the community when we go out of business. And I've noticed that. I've noticed that in a number of different ways. Anheuser Busch in St. Louis, man, they 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 sponsored everything, and I feel like they. I mean, they really had a lot of work to do, and they did it, and they didn't complain. And um, with these larger companies, national multinational corporations. Um, you know, you, let's say you want to go to Lowe's tomorrow and have Lowe's sponsor your event. Good luck with that. Good luck at finding the person that's going to solve that problem for you. Whereas if you find a local business like mine, you'll probably find me. And so I feel like as the, the companies have gotten bigger, the ability to extort them for community, quote unquote, has gotten uh, smaller, which benefits those companies. And uh, doesn't benefit companies like mine because then we have to pick up the slack and it's hard. Um, and most people don't understand that you have to make a profit at some point. You know, you can't just give and give and give and give and give and then not make a profit and not reinvest your profits in your organization. Uh, they they just care about you know they just care about their own um, things. So anyway, I thought that was very interesting. It says, "Raising Cane's was one of only three restaurants brands to be named Forbes's best employers for new grads top 100 list." The company's fast-paced, fun culture and growth opportunities earned a spot on Glassdoor's 100 places to 100 best places to work in the U.S. list in 2021. Um. You know, on that 100 best places to work list, we didn't have those like 30 years ago. Um, but to me, a bit of a sham. For instance, some real estate companies in St. Louis are on the 100 best places to work. And you're an independent contractor. You don't get any money from the brokerage unless you sell a house. So, I mean, you're not even, you're not even employed, really. It's bad. I don't trust this stuff at all based on that. So anyway, I just thought it's it's largest Texas rest restaurant in Odessa. They've already got a um, hundred some odd restaurants there, but they've decided to make the biggest one in Odessa. 50,000 views. Now, how in the world, I'm sorry that my eyes itch. How in the world did they decide that oh, Odessa's was going to be the best one? I don't know. I just I'm asking. I don't I don't have the answer. Close this. All right, let's do what what I like to do. We're going to Lincoln, Nebraska today. And we're going to look at luxury houses in Lincoln. Now, it's going to be tough because, like, this first one looks like a farm. Second one looks like a fix and flip. Third one's new construction. You know I don't like to do that. Um, so, and the funny thing is this one is brokered by Woods Brothers Realty. In St. Louis, we have Wood Brothers Realty. Kind of fascinating. Let's look at this one real quick. If it's if it's just a farm, 
we'll get out of here. Yeah, two bedrooms, two baths for one point, you know, one thousand square feet, eleven hundred square feet. To me, it's not a house we're going to deal with. So the first one is not doesn't exist. The second one, one point eight million, five bedroom, five and a half bath. 9,186 square feet on a half acre lot. This is before renovation interior project for May 2022. Okay. So what's the deal here? Four car, four car garage, 19 days on the market. Property history was it sold in 2022 for 1.1 million and immediately put back on the market uh, 30 days later. So this is going to be a fix and flip. This prestigious Schultz built home and very original. Then the Ridge is getting more than just a pretty facelift. It's a total renovation. The floor plan has been improved. Every surface is being transformed and new features are all in the works, including adding two new wet bars, laundry in the primary bedroom with an attached dressing room, new fitness room, new pool, bath, locker room, New wine storage room and so much more. Walls are being opened. Flooring is being altered. Bathrooms are all gutted and being reconfigured. The landscaping is getting cleared and, and freshened, as are all four of the fireplaces and four laundry locations. Everything about this property is an ultimate luxury with an inspiring in design details. The renovation construction is scheduled to be completed in May. Photos will be periodically updated with progress. It is well on its way. Call your agent to come see you today. So it's a fix and flip. The most expensive house in Lincoln, Nebraska right now is a fix and flip. I mean, that's it. That, that tells you how the world is, is working. I'm not going to do new construction, don't care. Here's a house for just under a million dollars, okay, in Lincoln. Four bedrooms, three and a half baths, 4,800 square feet. I like the kitchen, but I th always think that the first picture should be of the house. Property details, stunning and completely remodeled walkout ranch home and a fabulous gated community. You have gated communities in Nebraska. The four bedroom, four bath home is perfectly situated on an incredible lot with lush, mature landscaping and gorgeous views. The spacious rooms are well appointed and filled with light. The chef's kitchen features a huge center island large pantry, and high-end appliances. Outside in the backyard oasis is a beautiful in-ground pool as well as a built-in hot tub. The craftsmanship is top-notch and attention to details outstanding. Tour this beauty today. I will not because I'm living in St. Louis, Missouri, and I don't want to make the drive. Um, it was listed. Goodness. It's been listed since 2019. I don't really know that they're doing it right. 57 pictures is a lot. And you know, it's like a million dollars and I get to live next to somebody. Great. And look, all these trees, but nobody else has all these trees. Kind of interesting. Like, see how they've got different landscaping? Oh, gosh. Now I did that. I'm sorry. Here. I know, oh, I know my navigation buttons. Is it a nice house? Absolutely. Is it a good deal relative to other houses in the area? I don't know. Yeah, nice pool. I like a pool. But I mean, this to me is like kind of urban sprawl. It's not. It's. It's not where I want to be. We got new construction, new construction, new construction. We got a new one, Nebraska Realty, nine hundred and fifty thousand. I mean, all of the expensive homes are new construction. I mean, what does that tell you? Well, it tells me that the inventory there is not good enough I guess there must be a need for all these homes this house was built in 2017 been on the market 11 days four car garage 63 pictures it's off of, it's off of a lake uh, 
it says it was listing removed in 2019 and then they just and look at that listing removed and the price was 135 and now they're up at 949 obviously there was a mistake somewhere or it's a new it's new construction yeah let's just take a look i mean it's not going to be i mean there's the lake is that some ice would you say this is the craftsman style so i have one for you my wife is like very very good at design and i'm not saying that just because she's my wife she she is very good at design because she'll listen to me <laughs> and we'll, and try to incorporate the things i want well in the kitchen i think we're both we're both in a space where i think we could really have an agreement and we got to redo our kitchen anyway but here's here's something here's a dilemma that a real estate agent faces just like everyone else i know i'm i'm done with nebraska I, it, it's not interesting to me but let's let's go over real quick the uh the dilemma and we'll go back to here um so i live in a neighborhood and i i think the i think the houses bring three hundred thousand every day of the week right now in this market probably more but it's not it's not even anywhere close to what i paid for my house um when i went to buy my house the idea that you'd spend three hundred thousand dollars on these houses is ridiculous but anyway i've got some money to play with uh, some equity to play with I needed to redo the kitchen and my just from with being with you and um, looking at all these kitchens I mean you can definitely see um, some features that would be really really nice uh, one of them is to uh, make a huge space incorporate the whole space as part of the kitchen um, which I think I think makes sense I think you have to have an island and I think you have to have like little seats at the island uh, my parents have an island, but it's from the it's from the eighties and it's dated. Um, it, it's it's uh, it's not right. It's not not where we need to be in this in what Anise and I are planning. But that's my wife. Uh, anyway, you know, we could put in a pretty luxurious kitchen like with the best appliances. But I don't know that would fit in the neighborhood. And, and just, I saw that in the last house. There's a million dollar house and they've got a Frigidaire stove like from Best Buy. It's like, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. So I, I just thought that's kind of interesting. If we ever redo my kitchen, that's going to be problematic because if we don't put the stove exactly where it, it is, eesh. Not good. Anyway, I just thought about that. That's that's dicey. See, so anyway, um, but what do you do? I mean, if I put all this money into the kitchen, I'm not going to get it out of the kitchen. I don't think. Plus, styles change over the years. Like, it's a question of how long you're going to live here. How much more money would you get? For a luxury kitchen in a home that's not a lu I mean we're not we're not luxury people not a luxury neighborhood now I suspect our kitchen even now will look better than the kitchen that they build next door those houses are going 1600 square feet for six hundred thousand dollars the world's gone mad for housing I mean at least in the United States it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous and um, I'm not predicting that it's going to stop anytime soon or anything like that. I'm just saying it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The whole thing. Speaking of ridiculous, let's go into our next article, our first article of the day. Um, have you been following this? So, I have. Texas's Keller Williams wins back executive after Twitter dust up. The former EX president of operations switches teams in ongoing brokerage battles. So just like if you're a real estate agent, you'll get calls every day from random 
um, real estate brokerage throughout the, the city that say, hey, you should come work for us. You know, we're better. It's, it's fine. I mean, that's, that's part of the job. Okay. And it says, in an industry known for its high-profile poaching battles, which is normal, like this is not unusual, a rival between Texas Keller Williams and virtual brokerage EXP is heating up. Former EXP president of operations Stacy Onan is headed back to Keller Williams. Onan will be the Austin-based brokerage's new head of business operations. Onan joined EXP in 2018 as its senior vice president of brokerage operations. Oh, so she's now moving up. Good for her. She first worked at Keller Williams a decade earlier, starting at Arizona-based Keller Williams Check Realty in 2008. Moved from there to be a Realty One Group regional and operations manager, and then on to EXP. Onan is credited for the rapid growth of the Bellingham, Washington-based company after she joined the company. I'm, I'm guessing that's EXP. Is that where they're based? I don't know much about EXP. They're in our marketplace, but I don't. I mean, I don't really care. You know, it's just a, a real estate brokerage brand. In my in my world, is like ugh, because I want to sell houses. That's like that's what I want to do. I don't really want to build brokerages. You say, well, it's smarter to build with other people. It's I'm just this is who I am, and this is what I do. She is renowned for an ability to operate to operationally scale brokerages through periods of rapid growth. Now, this is where it gets interesting. That that you know anybody can write a press statement that says the person is great that we hired. What are they going to do? Rip the person that they hired? It's, I mean, come on. Onan's move comes. This is the interesting part. Comes during an increasingly public feud between EXP and Keller Williams. Keller Williams Realty and EXP at World Holdings, EXP's parent company, are in court arguing over a temporary restraining order. A Texas court issued to former Keller Williams CEO Mark Willis on February 7th. The order blocks Willis's planned move to join EXP in an executive role. EXP filed a counter motion to dissolve the order the same day it was issued. So this Willis was headed to EXP. This Onan is headed to Keller Williams, okay. And now the guy that's going to Keller, the guy that's going to EXP is not allowed to go, but the woman that is going to Keller Williams is allowed to go. It says Mark Willis is a current co-owner of two Keller Williams regions and a market center. Keller Williams spokesman Daryl Frost said in a statement to the Real Deal, due to his current ownership interests. Mr. Willis has a Willis has a non-competition obligation in place with Keller Williams in which he agreed not to compete with his partners and Keller Williams while simultaneously profiting off of them. As a result, the company filed this lawsuit to enforce the agreements and protect the interests of his franchise partners and Keller Williams. I don't know anything about this. This is what the person person said. I don't want to get, you know, I don't really know. So Willis started for Keller Williams in 1991 when he took leadership of one of the brokerage's Austin-based teams. Company founder Gary Keller appointed Willis president in 2002 and CEO in 2005. It says Willis is created, credited with leading the company's growth and transition into an international brokerage. He left Keller Williams in 2014, and so that's where it got interesting, to lead his own coaching company for brokers and agents and embark on other business ventures so he's been out since two, 2014 it's now 2022 he apparently owns some ancillary has some relationships continuing with keller williams it says two days before onan's hiring was announced exp world holdings founder glenn sanford tweeted it's fun to have a competitor who diminished you in the past try to use the legal system to try to keep former team members from joining the team, but did not name the competitor. Sanford led a team at Keller Williams in the early 2000s. I mean, it's just like a drama. Are you guys interested in drama? There it is. Will you have... Drama with Deerwood Realty and executives leaving. Well, I'm the only executive. And I started the brokerage and I'm not leaving. 
Will I bring on new people from time to time? Yes. Have I figured out who that person is or what their role would be? No. I know it sounds bad, but I like showing houses and I like helping buyers and sellers. That's what I like to do. Do I like putting myself out there as the face of the brokerage? I mean, I do. I, I do it. I don't know that I like it. But like, look at the things that I found. Like this live streaming thing is fantastic. I love it. I mean, even after today, look at all the terrible time we had this morning. It was, it was awful. I wasn't embarrassed so much as it was just, you know, disappointing. But we're back. We're on track. I mean, shooting at 60 frames per second on a computer that was built in 2013, probably. Probably a bit much. But anyway, uh, that's that article. You know, is the, is the brokerage business the same thing since 2014? Probably not. Probably not. So, I don't know. I don't know. I, I have no dog in this fight. How about that? Next one. This is the last article we'll go on. Okay, now, I think this is fair. I want to, I'm going to get rid of all this other stuff so that you can't see what we're going to do tomorrow. Hopefully I have it recorded right. This is on Realtor.com. It says, in today's housing market, and I'm sorry, in today's insane housing market, just how high a price can you pay? Find your exact breaking point here. So this article, and I'm, it's, it's a sign of the times, saying, look, you have to buy the, you have, you have to spend the most money you possibly can to buy a house. And even when you do, it's going to be a crappy house. It's really bad. It says, you're likely aware that the homes these days cost astronomical sums with the median home price hovering at $375,000, an increase in 10% from a year earlier. I mean, gosh, that's a daunting task for young couples uh, to try to pay that. And for what? Uh, daunting for sure, yet if you're pondering home purchase right now, the more important number to know is this, how much home can you afford? That's true. It's true. And like I was telling you with my one buyers, actually two buyers, two, two sets of buyers, both of them know what they can afford and know kind of what they want to get. And both of them have a chance to get that. Some of my other buyers have uh, one of them, they can buy a big expensive house, but they want a bigger and more expensive house. So it's like they're not happy with what they're seeing. But anyway, uh, the answer to this question is all the more crucial, critical in today's red-hot warp speed market where you won't stand a chance without a clear picture of your finances. If all you have is a hazy idea of what you can pay, home sellers will have a hard time taking you seriously. Worse yet, you might get swept up in a bidding war on a home and win only to find out afterwards you've committed to a price beyond your means. Yikes. No, that would not happen with me. That would not happen with me. I would work with my um, buyers to make sure that if we did make an offer, that that, that would be a solid offer it says the key to achieving home ownership today is to have a bullseye focus on what's within your financial reach and vow not to spend a penny more head into the house hunt with your numbers in hand know your top number if you can afford to a two hundred fifty thousand dollar house don't look at three hundred thousand dollar houses you'll buy a, a nature like three hundred thousand dollars sorry this is weird if you can't if you can't afford a $250,000 house, don't look at $300,000 houses. Well, that's pretty obvious. You will buy nature like the $300,000 houses better and start rationalizing spending more. You know what, though? You'd think that. But sometimes when you see a $300,000 house and you see a $250,000 house and the $250,000 house is nicer, then you say, well, why is that price at $300,000? Well, it could be the neighborhood. You know, there, there, it could be dated. There could be something about it. Um, but I agree for the most part. I mean, if you can only afford two fifty, don't look at two to three hundred. And you know what? Don't even do that. If you get, if the most you can afford is two hundred fifty, that's your top. Any house that comes to market two hundred fifty thousand in this market is going to be too high for you because it's going to go for what ten over asking. So you won't be able to afford that. So don't don't do that. 
This is my thought. It says, of course, this top number is different for everyone, and while figuring it out might seem daunting, it actually boils down to just a few simple rules. Here's how to get a handle on your home buying budget so that you can find a home that's priced just right for you. First of all, how large a mortgage can you afford? And the only reason why I'm reading this is because it has the numbers here. While most homeowners will make a sizable down payment on a house, typically 3.5% to 20% of the property's price, the rest of the money is typically borrowed in form of mortgage, which is then paid back to the lender every month plus interest for 30 years. Although paying for a house in increments sounds much more manageable than coughing up the whole caboodle up front, lenders will want to see that you have enough money rolling in to cover the bills. Banks commonly allow up to 28% of your gross income before taxes as your monthly house payment. Let's say, for instance, that every month you're pulling in $6,000 before taxes. That means $1,680 is the maximum amount that you can go towards monthly house payments. Keep in mind this should include not just your mortgage, but all housing expenses, including property taxes, home insurance, and mortgage insurance, many of which get rolled into your monthly payments. It says, what is the debt to income ratio, which a lot of people, I mean, that's really important. It says, while 20%, 28% of your income can go towards housing, this is likely not the full price or full picture since you might have other debts such as credit cards or college loans. Your overall debts compared with your income define your debt to income ratio. To figure out your debt to income ratio, tally up how much you pay monthly towards debts like car payments, credit cards, and student loans. Once you have that number, divide that amount by your monthly income. So let's re revisit the scenario of a homeowner is making $6,000 per month pre-tax. But factor in the home buyer is also paying $500 per month to debts. Divide 500 by 600 and you have a debt to income ratio of 0.083 or 8.3%. That's fairly low. However, if you add in a monthly mortgage payment of 1500 you then divide by 2000 by 6000 for a DTI ratio of 33%. So just how high of a debt to income ratio so just how high should a debt to income ratio go when you buy a home? It says lenders li usually look for a debt to income ratio of 36% or less when underwriting your loan. This means that all your debts including a house payment should total no more than 36% of your pre-tax income. That said, in today's crazy market, staying under that threshold may be nearly impossible in certain areas. If this is the case with you, a certified financial planner thinks it's fine to nudge this ceiling up a bit. Don't go past 40 of your income. If you are debt free, you might put a bit more towards your housing cost. That says home affordability calculators can help. It says why mortgage pre-approval is a good idea. Well, obviously you want to get a mortgage pre-approval before you start. Since lenders won't loan you more money than they think you can easily pay back, pre-approval is a good way to gauge what home prices you can pay. Another nice bonus is that a pre-approved letter shows home sellers you're serious and can follow through on your offer, an important edge if you're bidding against other buyers who haven't taken the step. If you haven't gotten a pre-approval in this market, you are not serious about buying a home. Not serious. Well, I've run late, but I mean, did I really, considering we had such disasters? Um, I'm going to go to the tape and figure out what happened today. Um, thank you for, if well, you shouldn't be in too bad a shape if you're watching tonight, because it should be like only the best is going to stay on YouTube. The rest of it's going to get cut. I'm just not, I'm just not putting, putting it out there, but, uh, thank you for watching and, uh, come, come meet, come, come, come by tomorrow and be Friday, I believe. So I'm stuck in the house today. It's icy out. I, there's nowhere I can go without, um, having serious travel driving. Um, so that's that, um, man, this was a good one. We, we rallied after a terrible start, so 